Hello everyone, welcome to the Microdesk webinar series. My name is Ravali Ravulapati and I'm the Marketing Manager for the California region. Welcome to today's webinar, Infrastructure Design Suite, MAP3D 2012. For those of you who aren't familiar with us, Microdesk is an Autodesk Gold, Oracle, and Google partner. We provide technology training and consulting solutions for the AEC industry. We have 11 offices located throughout the East and West Coast with a staff of over 90 consulting and technical specialists. Over the next hour, we'll take a closer look at some of the tools in the latest suite of integrated project delivery software from Autodesk. In this session, we'll explore MAP3D, included in the Infrastructure Design Suite 2012 Standard, Premium, and Ultimate Editions. With MAP3D, we can improve de decision-making through visualization and analysis and ex exchange information in both CAD and GIS formats. Presenting today's session is Microdesk Solutions Specialist, Christina Davis. Here at Microdesk, Christina is responsible for providing technical support and training to civil engineering and surveying clients nationwide. She has over 10 years of experience with CAD applications and has been working with AutoCAD since release 12. Christina has extensive knowledge of AutoCAD, Autodesk Civil 3D, and Architectural Desktop. And she is certified in Civil 3D implementation and holds a degree in Architectural Technology. Just a few logistics before we begin. In order to minimize any background distractions, you're all on mute for the duration of the session. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the question area of the webinar toolbar to the right of your screen. Christina will address as many questions as she can at the end of the presentation. If we run out of time, we will provide you with our contact information so you can follow up with us. And now, I'll turn it over to Christina. Do you want to listen? Do you want to listen to how Christina does her webinar? Or you don't care? Drastic example, but that is what we're looking at. We're also, from a, from a purchasing standpoint, uh, and an installation standpoint, reducing a lot of those steps because we're buying a packaged product, a suite of products. It's kind of like doing one purchase. Instead of figuring out how many seats I need of this and how many seats I need of that and which department needs this, I'm going to just purchase that one suite and deploy it out to everyone. The installation, as you'll see, is also very quick in that all the products that we go in at once. So we're really talking about power, so the ability to create the model work with GIS information, do simulation, do regular, as well as accessibility, making it available to everyone on our team, even though they may not be using those on a daily basis, they will have access and can get benefits. And then also the, the value of having all of these projects, all of these products, rather, in-house, so that we have the capability if our company is moving into doing more rendering. Let's send that out. We have the access. So a little bit on the framework of the suite, there is, as you can see on the side, standard, premium, and ultimate editions, and different flavors, we'll say, of these. There's design, product design, factory design, so these will be focusing uh, on your general design. Factory design will be more mechanical, uh, so if you're familiar with inventor-type products, uh, building design suite, 
infrastructure design suite, which is what we'll be looking at. Uh, so building design would have a heavy focus on Revit for our BIM modeling, plant design, looking at Autodesk P and ID. And then your entertainment, which would be your 3D Studio Max, your Maya. So from rendering maybe for a site or a building all the way up to Maya, where it would be creating video games and movies, things like that. And if I jump to the next slide. So again, we're going back to what is it that we need to do in our daily process? You know, is it just drafting anymore? Is it just the modeling anymore? Is it that the need to design, visualize, and simulate? So again, we're going back to making these renderings, doing clash detections, um, and, and then one economical purchase. So I won't get into the details of cost or anything, because as a tech, I'm not allowed to go there. But if you will find that rather than purchasing all different things, where some may fall on subscription, some may go on subscription, some may have been forgotten, you're having this one convenient purchase. And we can quickly go to these different values. So again, even if you may not have someone who's going to become the master of modeling in your office, they may need to access some of that information. Having that software available on the machine through the suite, they'll be able to do that. And now taking a look at the suite that we're focusing on, infrastructure suite, to see that in the standard version, um, as well as premium and ultimate, Map3D is included in all of those. They start from the bottom, everything on the bottom goes up to the top. So Map3D would be included in all of these, but you'd also get AutoCAD, uh, Navisworks Simulate, moving up to the premium, 3D Studio Max Design, so our visualization, our rendering capabilities, and then all the way to the ultimate, um, uh -huh. Navisworks Manage, which will allow me to do simulation. Uh, and again, oh, this is just a redo one that we're doing. Do you want me to invite you? Yeah. So for our design okay. capabilities, uh, and modeling. Okay. Now going back to the install and deployment, um, though many of you may not be the one who's actually installing the software, if you speak to whoever that is, your IT department, you'll know that there, there's a lot of things that can uh, come and play with installation. It's not just putting in a disk anymore. It's creating deployments for each and every product. So if you look at the graphic here, if you have AutoCAD and Showcase and Sketch and Design and Max and Mudbox, these would have been all separate deployment images that IT would have gone in, created these, uh, possibly created each of these for 32 and 64-bit Windows systems. So it was a lot of work to make sure that everything's in there running and accessible for everyone. Now when we're installing the suite, it's going to be a screen for your IT professional can go in, select the products that are going to be needed by your team, and it's one install. So when I double-click the deployment for uh, the Design Suite 2012, I'll get AutoCAD Showcase, Sketch Design, Act Design, and Mudbox all in that one install. So it makes it a lot easier for that to get rolled out because it's being rolled out in a suite. And with the value, we talked about how the purchasing can get a little confusing. You have serial numbers, you have group numbers, you have subscriptions, some things are not on subscriptions. We're keeping these all in the package. So one, we're purchasing from one vendor. So when you're purchasing a suite from uh, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft, pardon me, Microsoft, <laughs> you're dealing with us purchasing one product. So you're not going to maybe another reseller that focuses on uh, M&E, so Maya, Max, and another one that focuses on construction and simulation, so now that you're pushing that all through one center. And then for licensing, again, going there back to the IT professional. To sign up for and join it. So in the past, you may not know mm -hmm. this, but there were licenses for every single product. So going back to that list, AutoCAD, mm -hmm. Alias, Sketch, Mudbox, those would have each been a license that had to be set up and configured properly. Now it's just one. One nice paragraph, I keep the set in there, everybody's up and running. We also like to keep people on the same release. So if you've ever tried to save files back, work with people in older versions, or you, know, you get something from someone who's a newer version from you, um, within offices, this is becoming an issue where we're sharing jobs across different offices or different teams. We want to keep everybody on the same release. If everyone's using the suite, they will be on the same release. So maybe I won't go into civil 3D. Maybe I'm just going to be focusing on text and basic drafting and documentation and plotting, I can open up my sweet version of AutoCAD and get access to those skills so that if someone sends me a file from Civil 3D, I'll still be on the same version with them, but I'm not looking at adding in a full infrastructure network. So, 
finally, in talking about the suites, it, these are the things we want to talk about. So in the beginning, I had mentioned how these are tools. Software is a tool, like a pen or a pencil or a T-square that we might have had in hand drafting. And the goal is that I'm going to use this tool to make my business money or save my business money. So if I can reduce costs by having a quicker installation process from my IT department, quicker way for them to get my license up and running so we're not waiting or working on the weekends to get the products installed. Also, if I can do things like simulation, you know, if I'm building and designing, I'm not really doing it in the bubble. You know, if I'm dealing with roadways and pipes, someone else is building and bridges, we should be looking at how those are going to go through and see, is our timeline going to work? Is somebody falling behind? Is there going to be a problem based on where the existing pipes are to what I'm planning to design and put in? Using Navisworks for that. And then all of our BIM modelers, so Civil 3D, Revit, um, We've really seen the power of those to help us not just get the fastest design out we can, but get the best one. Because we can try different iterations of the job, check out different values, process all that information quickly. So what Sweeps is allowing us to do is we get all of that ability in one economical package that makes it easy from installation all the way to final construction. So now that you have a general idea of suite overall, we'll get into our, our focus product today, which is Map 3D as well. And in looking at what's new, and also some things that are not so much new, but maybe new to you, um, the things that have been increased are your ability to access different types of data. So there's files from images, there's files from other software programs, um, there's different types of databases, and Autodesk has really worked to increase our library of, of data access so that they can try to reach out to all those formats that you may run into, as well as coordinate systems. Um, coordinate systems themselves aren't new, but the way that we can go in and look at the framework or how they're programmed has been enhanced. And then in planning and analysis, we're going to look a lot at our labeling. So in the past, there were math labels, and then there were AutoCAD labels, or your M text, and this is really helping us jump that gap. There were certain things that MTEX could do, AutoCAD labels, and certain things that could do, and there wasn't really an in-between. So that's been updated. Also with your drawing output. So GIS objects, uh, SDO objects, and Map3D are not the same as an AutoCAD line. So when we send that to someone who's not going to be accessing our database, uh, the output sometimes can be a little large, a little choppy, maybe too many points, maybe not enough points, and, and this is a way for us to control that. And then the big exciting piece is the data modeling and management. So this um, takes in a lot of information from TopoBase. So you may or may not have heard of TopoBase, it's one of Autodesk's products, and um, it, it helps with industry models and managing larger databases. Um, one of the, the big key things that TopoBase has is water management, so managing your water system. Some of that has been introduced into Map3D. So even if we don't have TopoBase, we can still use the power of all of that information, um, as well as some workflow tools. The so workflows are helpful in maintaining standards for what data will be attached to objects, as well as how they will look and how they're processed. Um, and it's a way for us to customize things to our workflow, make it easier for everyone else on our team to, to get their work plan out. So starting with data access and editing. Um, when we're talking about the entity, those of you that have worked with SDO realize that you can select an SDO object, which means feature data object, and work with it like it's a polyline. So while it technically is not a polyline, it's still an object attached to a database, I'm going to have grip editing behavior, um, command line prompts to stretch things, move things, the same as I would an AutoCAD polyline. However, when I attach that to model data, I can put in more information, instead of just being a polyline that's red, it is now it's a feature object that is red, but also has a certain line weight, and is listed as a PVC 12-inch gravity pipe. The date that it was installed, those are the things that I'm attaching to these objects. And instead of just being line work, they're actually information that can be used to manage a city, manage you know, a country, manage, um, and, and keep that information in check. So. If there's certain pipes that are 200 years old, for some reason, that those are still there, you 
you're going to want to be able to look up quickly and show, show me all the pipes that are built for X here. Those are going to have to get rehab. And then we'll look at that coordinate system framework. So the dialog box has changed. It's a little bit friendly now to search. Um, of course, you kind of had to remember the to work with, but if you're working internationally, you may not memorize all those codes. Also, if we want to customize our own coordinate system before your access try to get in with someone at Autodesk. If you knew a programmer or you knew a developer, you know, a lot of people have got on band and said we really need to a coordinate system. It might show up next to it, but not so easy to just make your own on the fly because we're getting more accurate with our map. So sometimes it's just stock generic and it doesn't always work. And then our FDO provider. So this I'll maybe just show you in the list. Um, some of those listed here are GIS. ODBC access. Those are things that sort of pulling in from third-party products. Um, there are additional files that you may need, like for ArcGIS, for example, you need some of the, the files, so you would have to have a license of that to get those files. But the ability is there for you to bring it into a, a map format. So now I'm going to jump into Map 3D, and we'll take a look at those things. So I had just a starting plan here. And right now we're just looking at AutoCAD objects. Lines, text, uh, maybe a few circles and arcs. And I'm going to connect to some additional data. So I click Data Connect, and you'll notice uh, this interface might be a little new for you. We're going to a ribbon interface that will be more in line with Windows and other Microsoft products. But in the Data Connect, I'm going to choose the data type. Now, you'll notice here I do have our SDP connections, so personal and file geodatabases, um, Oracle connections, WMS connections, so if there's a live web feed that's giving you data, so access to a lot of different information in a EWG environment. So I'm just going to reconnect to some tasks that I had set up here. And you'll see I can browse to a, a specific file or I can browse to an entire folder, depending on what I'm trying to load. So I'm going to load some SDF files. Uh, an SDF is an Autodesk database file. And it's become very helpful when you're working with SDF files and Civil 3D because you can have those files automatically converted to Civil 3D objects, such as Civil 3D type network. So I've added a few things here. Um, and I'm going to open up a table so we can view some of this data. So I have some pipe intersection information. And you'll notice that when I open up the table and click on a row, it zooms me to that specific entry and highlights it in the background. So as I select an entry in the table, I will be auto-zoomed to that entity in the drawing. and it will highlight. There we go. Now for editing purposes, there's a process of checking things out and in. So I'm still attached to that SDF file. That is my, my database. If I want to make an edit, I don't want to accidentally just come in and pull it like it's a polyline without any sort of check or balance for that. So I would pick this segment of pipe check that out, meaning I've now got it locked. So other people could be hooked up to this data, but I'm the one who's going to be able to make an edit. And I would update that pipe. But now that it's checked out, it behaves as if it were an AutoCAD polyline again. The ribbon editing tools that you're used to, you'll see up here in the ribbon, it changes to show me tools appropriate for dealing with the feature object. Um, copying rotate, all of those tools will, will behave as what we've been using in AutoCAD for years. And then when I'm through, I would check that data back in. So I'm going to check that in to whatever database I'm working on. So the SDF file is now going to take that data and update. And then since I did copies, I would come in and update some of these values. Numbers and you'll see I'm just typing just as if I were in Excel or Word, and it's attaching that data to the object. And I was just checking when I was through. So data, SDF files, shapes files, personal geodatabase files, uh, Oracle connections, SQL connections.
connections, raster images, so TIFFs, SIDs, uh, even JPEGs, all of those things I, I can connect to, and they're adding and adding to that list of, of providers. So now I want to go in and, and change some of the styling here. So I'm going to take a look at one of the manholes. You see it's a little green node there. And then I'm going to hit the style button so I can control that. Now, styling itself, or making themes to give you different colored ranges is not new, but the interface has changed. So the dialog box has been updated um, to simplify the interface. So I would come in, I've already got a symbol here using the circle. Perhaps I want these to be stars instead. And then I can change the color. So instead of that green fill, I would make that red, choose an edge color, uh, whether or not there's a rotation, set a height and width, make that a little bit larger. And then I hit apply and close. And then in a moment, that green circle manhole should now be a red star outlined in cyan. And if I'm in that same window, if I go over to Feature Label, because right now I can see that there's some sort of node there, but I don't really know what it is, I can go to Add a Label. So again, text label, not a new idea, but this interface is different. So I would click Add Label, and then choose my text options below. So it can automatically become untext or plain text. You can include symbols in your text. Choose a font choose the height, bold, italicized. So buttons that we're used to seeing in, in other programs or other locations that weren't here uh, previously. We'll do no color background, giving me a preview there. And then I'll choose my text content. So what from that object data that I connect to would I like to show for information? So maybe I'll do the manhole ID. I'll hit apply and close and then give it a moment to refresh. There's a few other manhole that we're not looking at that are updating as well. And there's my manhole ID. I'm going to leave that there for a moment. You'll see as I'm zooming in and out, it's updating. And I'm going to save and close this drawing just to show you that styling, uh, again, with a polygon shape, since we have lines of points here. I'm going to start a new drawing and connect to polygon closed area data. And then connect to an entire folder this time. And I'm going to put in some zoning information. So I'll check off that item, add it to my map, and you'll see some zone based on the screen. So the first color is just the default randomly selected color that it will pick. But if I come in and make a new theme, a theme is where I want to split up this map display in, in colors more than just purple. And I want those colors to indicate some kind of information to me, like the size of that district, or how many children, or what elementary school they belong to, um, or who their representative is, things, you know, things like that. So I choose a property again, so area, maybe how large it is, what zone it is. We'll do by area. It'll show you minimum, maximum values that it finds. And then you can control how it's split up. So there's different calculations for how it decides to update these groups. And then I want to choose my style range. So from what color, you know, what light color to what dark color do I want to display this map. So a new editor here. But what I'm choosing is in this first bar, it's kind of outlined in blue there, what kind of an outline I want. And then the second, if I click there, is the, the color red. So I have an outline style, the line pattern, line color. If I make that red, you can hopefully see it there through the screen. And then I have a fill color. So inside there, I'd like to go from you know, red to, oh, let's go from red to blue. And this, unlike the first two boxes we saw, I can add my text right away. So there's a plus sign over here, and then I get text. And same same thing here. I would choose my 
text data. And you'll see that there, there, we do have different, different boxes going up. Because we're doing a theme, it is a different behavior. So everything isn't across the board the same. So when you have a theme, same choices like area, I'm just adding it differently. If I pick area, click OK. Uh, let's make that text height a little bit larger so we can read it. Up and then let me just go back one more time. Um, there was a third tab there just for symbols. So if I wanted to add some kind of node in there, similar to how we had the sample. I'm going to click OK, and you'll see my map outlined and displayed there. So some of the smaller areas, the, the light pinks and the white, they are actually but mostly white and dark red. So this range here is probably a little bit less. The same behavior was split into the feed. still have individual polygons, you'll see as I move my mouse around the different shapes, but I can give myself a stylized map, and then I would go in and update that. Or I could send everything back to just one, two, three. So that interface is, is a little bit different. It might take one or two times in there to get comfortable. But now going back to the labeling, I mentioned now you have a choice of and text, or you had a choice of math text, and the two shall never meet in between. Um, and what we have now for this type of information is I can't come into this label object and switch it from a, a map SEO feature label to an AutoCAD entity. I'm going to switch ribbon tabs up here. You'll see there is a way that I can change labels or map SEO labeling text or end text to a text layer. So let's say I decide to turn all my labels to text. So I want to convert them to end text. If I choose text layer, it'll list over here, similar to the FDO connections with the uh, AutoCAD entity. And then what the source was, and then a AutoCAD layer. So the target would be your AutoCAD layer, or I can make a new one. And then I can do all labels or just the ones that are within my current view right now. I'm going to click OK, give it a moment to refresh there, and then we'll take a look at that text object. So where this is beneficial is that I can just pick one or two as I'm going through and say, okay, this one specific piece of text I'd like to make a little bit larger or the, the spacing that math is using, especially on roadways, every little segment would get another label. I, I want to control that a little bit more. You can go in and, and fix those things without having to do you know, an entire global change. Oh, and maybe I should have used a larger text type. Let's see if I can get over to that. All right, so let me redo that with some other labels that came out a little bit smaller than I was expecting. I'm just going to add label. I'm going to close. So I'm adding some pipe labels. I'm going to zoom into one of those nodes. Okay, so 
apparently well, too many labels that were coming up just there. That's okay. Happens to the best of us. So I'm just gonna go back in there, show you some of those leaders, maybe with a smaller set of data. Water, 
uh, wastewater. And as soon as you open up one of those industry models, your workspace will change a little bit. We have certain ribbons across the top that are pretty standard. I will get a new ribbon that has things related to the industry model. I'll also get another uh, addition to over my task chain area to look at this information. So if I go over, even though I haven't made a connection, you'll see how the industry model gives me tools for that type of object. So I opened up water. So I have valve options. So when I create a valve, it's automatically applying a standard to it. So we're used to AutoCAD standards for layers, textiles, and text. Now I'll get the same thing here. I create that valve, and then this industry model wants this information. So it wants a number name, it wants a model for that type of valve, values, function of that valve. And I would input all this information and then whatever other details I need, and I would update and close. So I'm missing a few values there. But I can either continue or just add other pieces. So rather than myself going through and creating an entire model, I can take what's already an industry standard, and you'll see that as I'm creating pipes, I can put in different connectors. And I'm just right-clicking on each of these tools for points, controls, protections, miscellaneous details, site information, and that's all coming right with the product. So it can take a little time to develop your own model, but this is very helpful as you're getting started. Now you may come up with your own town or municipality standard, but this is an option that's there. And then I would go to the table for each of those to put in additional details. I look at the industry model tools across the top. Shows me that I'm in an industry model based on that drawing. Um, I have choices for the display. I can edit the model. And this is one of those things that, you know, probably not everyone right in the beginning, but some of this modeling information can be customized, usually by an administrator. And I can also generate graphics um, to Industry Model Explorer will allow me to look deeper into more commands. So I talked about workflows in the beginning, and a workflow is something that you can store and say, I need to create a type of pipe, or I need to add a type of valve. So here, where I sort of just went in and said, right-click on this layer, make this object, here I actually get a command. They create a network point creation, create a fire gate hydrant connection. And based on what's in that workflow, it can know that I need to be connected on two sides or three sides, or there should be a pipe going in for me, those kind of things. So if I create a facility and execute that, it gives me choices to how I want to digitize it, line, polygon, choose an existing structure, uh, which don't have one here. And then as I go back, lots of these are already created. Again, customizable but it gives you a good starting point to create that data. And when it loads the control for that pipe and for that fitting I created, I would enter in the appropriate data. What's helpful about this is there was a requirement previously to have Oracle. Um, and not every uh, office, especially if you're a smaller town, um, you, may, you may not have the funds to have a full Oracle set up with someone to manage it and someone to push all the data out. So here, we're getting that same capability of creating these maps and creating these databases and using it in an interview format. So we're sticking to a format that we're comfortable with that's easily manageable, but still getting access to all that important data. Um, so again, map comes with the electrical, water, wastewater. Uh, those are the industry models that you get, and those will also come with associated uh, workflows, business rules, and customizable options for you know, creating reports, creating styling. So all of that can be set up your own liking, or you can use different which ship.
Thank you, Christina. That was great. Let's see. I'm just going to give it a couple minutes just to see if anybody has any uh, questions. Okay, it doesn't look like anybody have, has any questions. So thank you, Christina, and thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar. We hope you found this helpful and educational. If you like more information about what you saw today, you can visit our website or any of the links mentioned on the screen right there. We have free webinars every Friday. You can check out our training as well, so you can browse through our course catalog, our upcoming training, or custom training. And you'll find details of upcoming free webinars, events, classrooms, trainings, and other valuable resources. And if you'd like more information, please do join our new um, our mailing list at marketingatmicrodesk.com. And if you don't have any other questions, I'm going to conclude this webinar. Thank you again, Christina, and have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks. Sometimes it's like